Okay. Let okay. me start. Let me start the reading then. Okay, Valerie. All right. Let me. Um, I'm just going to hit record, and we're ready to start. Okay. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020, order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Laws, Section third, Chapter 30A, uh, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020, order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. Members of the public who wish to watch and listen to the meeting may do so in the following manner. WCTV, Channel 9 on Comcast Infinity, Channel 37 on Verizon, and live stream WCTV.org. This meeting of the Wilmington Conservation Commission is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Members of the public who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may also do so via telephone by dialing 1-646-558-8656 and enter the meeting ID 846-2689-1612, then press pound and press pound again at the next voice prompt. Members of the public attending this meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so during the portion of the meeting designed for public comment. By following the steps previously noted, then press star nine on their telephone keypad. This will notify the meeting host that the caller wishes to speak. All callers using this feature will be placed in queue in the order they entered the prompt. In the event that despite our best efforts, we are not able to provide for real-time access, we will post a record of this meeting on the town's website as soon as we are able. So um, I'll declare the meeting uh, open at 708 here. Uh, the first item on the agenda is request for determination for 58 Aldrich Road. Actually, Don, before we get into that, do you want to do just a quick roll call of attendance um, for the meeting? Just so we have, since Tom's not on video, um, since we have. Sure. Um, Okay, thank you. Uh, Don Pearson, Chair. Vinny? Vinny, the charity. Here. Um, Laura? Laura, do all come here? Ron? Ron Bradley here. Um, Tom, welcome. Uh, Tom Olala, here for the first time. Great, welcome. Thank you. Okay. So, 58 Aldrich? Yes, here. Good. So we're requesting to put an above ground pool um, and to construct a deck over an existing roof line. Now Val, do you have something to share? Good. Yes. Um, so Mr. Chairman, if I could just um, add to sure. that. Um, so the addition, if you can see kind of where I'm pointing here, the addition seems to be over part of the existing, um, I think it's a one story roof line. Um, so I think it will um, be mostly in that location. Um, and the pool is shown here. Um, this is all previously disturbed area that was um, I think like a, a, a sandy play area. Um, um, for the kids, I think. So the closest point to the wetlands is 37 feet. Um, and the only comment that I had on this was um, from the engineering division um, just to add erosion controls. Okay. Um, Vinny, do you have any comments? I, not on this one, no. Oh, yeah, uh, I, I do. I changed my mind. 
<laughs> where, where, where is the pool going to be dis where is it going to be discharged uh, you know when it, when you clean it when the pump cleans it um the, it's a gibraltar pool so it doesn't require backwashing um so it's supposed to be limited that it would need to have water taken out of it okay okay a jacuzzi uh filter system I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't catch that. Filter system. Um, yes, the filter system. From what I've been told by the by the manufacturers, that it does not require back. So it would it it, it internally handles the filtering. <clears throat> That's all I have. Okay, Ron. I don't have any questions. Laura. No, I don't have any questions. The pool sounds lovely right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Tom. No questions here. Okay. Uh, nor do I have any questions. Um, so I'll, I'll entertain a motion that, uh, is there any, are there any questions or comments from the audience regarding 58 Aldrich Road? Currently there are no hands raised. No questions, no comments. Okay. I'll speak fast then. No. Um, in that case, I'll entertain a motion to um, issue a negative determination for 58 Aldrich Road. So moved. Uh, may I have a second? That was Vinny. May I have a second, please? Second. Uh, second by Ron. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Um, Vinny? Aye. Ron? Yes. Laura? Yep. Uh, Tom? Yes. And myself, yes. <clears throat> so, uh, thanks, you're all set. Okay, thank you very much, appreciate it. Sure. And we'll be in touch with the paperwork. Okay. <laughs> Do I stay on or do I, should I sign off now? Or? No, you can, you're welcome to sign off. You're welcome to stay on. Okay, thank you so much. Have a good day. Yeah, I know. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a uh, request for determination for 68 Aldrich Road. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Luke Roy. LJR Engineering um, here with the applicant, uh, Sharon McDonald. Uh, this is a request for determination we've submitted for 68 Aldrich Road. It's for a proposed addition uh, to an existing single family dwelling. Um, the property at 68 Aldrich Road uh, contains an existing dwelling, driveway, uh, pool, uh, surrounding yard areas around the house. Uh, the applicants proposing an addition to the right side of the house, 26 and a half by 32 foot addition. Um, the addition as it's proposed and as the wetlands currently delineated, you can see off to the left side and the north and uh, east, I guess, of the uh, sides of the site um, is entirely outside of the 100 foot buffer as we currently have it delineated. Um, the deck, the, I'm sorry, the addition is within existing areas of uh, lawn, uh, currently al already altered lawn, driveway, and the existing deck. Um, and then there's a new deck proposed uh, to attach to the uh, rear of the addition, 10 foot by 16 foot. Um, the, there's a pool to the rear that's proposed to be removed an above ground pool um, and we're proposing a roof drain infiltration system uh, to capture and infiltrate the uh, runoff from the roof of the uh, proposed addition um, and I will note uh, also that the runoff from the air from the work area basically drains to like in a southerly direction uh, away from the wetlands um, and not towards the wetlands, but we do have the erosion control uh, surrounding the work area and 
part of the reason for submitting the request for determination at all because all the work was outside the 100 foot there was some question as to the uh, wetland delineation there was some information in the file from previous work on this property that showed the wetland line somewhat differently or closer to the work we're proposing now um, so where that was potentially in question we wanted to uh, submit submit the request uh, for the commission to consider at, at tonight's meeting uh, and i'd be happy to answer any questions thank you valerie thank you mr chair um so as luke this, uh said there was a there's a file on this in the office um that when the the house was built um it showed if i can just move this a little bit it showed a um, wetland the wetland line um, sort of connecting these two pieces right here um, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a swale here um, so the wetland line previously kind of um, included this area right here i did do a site visit and um, i think i would agree more with what um, what they're showing on the plan um, there doesn't appear to be a connection through here anymore um, so i do think that the work is outside of the buffer zone um, as shown and um, and also the the roof infiltration um, seems to be adequate and they're proposing erosion controls um, so they're doing everything that'll be required for um, for stormwater thanks um Vinny. i don't uh, have anything it looks okay uh ron no questions laura no questions uh, Tom. Looks good. Um, I have no questions as well. Um, are there any comments or questions from the audience on 68 Aldrich Road? There are no raised hands at the moment. Um, okay. So no, no comments. Uh, then I'll entertain a motion to issue a negative determination for 68 Aldrich Road. So moved. Thanks. That was Ron. May I have a second, please? Second. Second from Vinny. Thank you. Um, so in the voting, Vinny? Okay. Um, Ron? Okay. Laura? Yes. Tom? Tom? Oh, he's muted. Hold on one second. Sure. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. And I, I vote. I back yes. on. Okay. Yes, we got you. And I vote yes as well. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could just ask a question. Um, Please. So for that one, um, would it be the determination, the negative determination that states that the area is not subject to the Wetlands Protection Act? It's not within the buffer zone. Would you agree with that that would be the, um, I think it's a negative um, three. Uh, sorry, no, it's a negative one. Um, that the area described in the request is not an area subject to protection under the act or the buffer zone. <clears throat> um, I, think, I think that's the appropriate one. Okay. Should, should we re-poll everyone or is it sufficient for me to just say it's, it's okay? I think it's okay. I think it's fine to just say that it's okay. I think um, that's what we that's what we discussed. So um, I right. just wanted to make sure. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So moving on to, yeah. uh, so we're we're all set then with sixty eight Aldrich. Thank you. Sure. Uh, next we have a notice of intent for City Lane Drive. Paul? Thank you, Mr. Yep. Chairman and members of the commission. Uh, Paul Aluni, town engineer, here representing uh, DPW for um, what is phase two of a three phase um, sidewalk extension project on Shady Lane Drive. Um, it's a notice of intent. Um, I'd like to share my screen if I could and um, bring up a locus map to kind of hone in the area. Uh, let me know if that's visible to everybody. Yes. 
Yes. Great. So just quickly, um, phase one was uh, over here by Lawrence Street um, to about Sprucewood, or actually um, what's Birchwood Road. Um, phase two, which is our current phase, or currently in uh, front of you for, is from Birchwood Road to Whitfield Terrace. It's about 1,200 linear feet. Um, and phase three will continue the extension um, from Whitfield Terrace to Middlesex Ave, but we, we don't have that designed yet. So that's uh, kind of not on the docket tonight. Um, there are wetlands, uh, BBW close to the roadway um, on both sides of the road uh, where my cursor is here and here. Um, so, and, and the 100 foot offset to the wetland is encompasses about 500 linear feet of the 1200 feet of sidewalk. So I'm going to now sh hone in on that area with my next plan. Um, let me know if that popped up. It should be a colored, yep. more of an engineering plan. Yes. Okay, great. Um, what's shown in purple is the sidewalk. Um, standard sidewalk for this section, we're using forest pavement um, for actually all of Shady Lane Drive. Uh, as we were evaluating this section, we came across a double barrel culvert. It's, um, if I had to guess, about 60 years old. It's, it's CMP. Um, it, both ends of the culvert are completely deteriorated. Um, so it's certainly served its, its life. Um, so we uh, decided to take this opportunity to show a culvert replacement project um, along with the um, work included for the sidewalk. Um, now, as far as other work um, included, the, the current drainage on Shady Lane Drive, it, um, it's just an A-grade inlet that drains to a roadway runoff directly to the wetland area. So we're, when we put a curb across, um, that would dam up if we didn't put a catch basin in. So we will be, we are proposing a catch basin, deep sump with a hood, and uh, we plan to tie that directly into um, the new culvert system. Uh, to limit our disturbance along the roadway embankment as like we, as you kind of, um, you know, widen the, um, the corridor there, we're proposing a retaining wall, and I showed that in orange here across, um, it's about 150 or so linear feet. It's only a couple feet or about two feet in height. So it's a really short wall. And that's just to limit the disturbance um, along the edge of the wetland. Um, just by virtue of extending that wall across, we do have, um, some wetland alteration, uh, permanent wetland alteration. It's about 28 square feet. Um, and our plan is to replicate um, along the edge of the wall, if you follow my cursor. So like the, the thin fringe between the current wetland line and what will be the bottom of the retaining wall, then we would restore as, a, um, as BVW. And we, our plan is to, um, use a wetland restoration mix um, along that roadway shoulder. Uh, that's the gist of the project. Um, we will be asking the commission respectfully for a continuance this evening. We received a couple days ago, um, we received a comment letter from MassDEP, which um, I can share with the commission, um, or I could just summarize for you the, the major topic of the comment was to um, that the stream should be evaluated as an intermittent i'm sorry the culvert should be evaluated as an intermittent stream crossing um, we had evaluated it as and designed it as a, a wetland equalizer um, i talked to the and replacing it in kind as such um, i talked to the wetland scientists that to perform the delineation, uh, he stated that um, at that time there was no intermittent stream present. Um, I can't really speak to, I don't have the experience to speak to whether or not one exists or doesn't. I can share with you what my eyes told me. Um, I saw our channel. It's um, on the upstream side, it's 
about 10 feet long, um, a couple inches deep, um, uh, two feet wide. Uh, so long story short, um, I spoke with DEP on the phone and we will be evaluating under the lens of the um, stream processing standards. So I'll look at um, some different sections there. I'll look at the hydrology on, on each side and the hydraulics of the um, of a culvert section. And I can tell you we'll be limited there. The, there's about a, I don't know, 10 to 12 inches of section between the um, pavement grade elevation and the top of culvert. So I, I don't know that we're going to be able to um, do much more than what we have shown, but it's, um, I won't be able to say for sure until we do the evaluation, which will provide a, um, a detailed memorandum for the commission to review on that. Um, no problem. And um, yeah, so, you know, I'm happy though to answer any questions now or, or take any comments from the commission so that um, we can address hopefully everything by the next hearing and continue our um, our endeavor here to um, increase pedestrian safety along Shady Lane Drive. Okay. Thank you. Valerie, you winked out for a second or so. Did you have anything to add? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman, the... Um, I did have two kind of questions, comments um, that I relayed to to Paul. Um, one was just um, the erosion controls are very tight um, along the proposed retaining wall, um, and sort of questioned the how that would be constructed. Um, Paul explained that that wall would be constructed from the street side, um, so that um, allows them to have those erosion controls pretty tight to it. Um, the other thing was um, a question about um, the proposed um, replication and restoration area and um, whether that was going to be a seed mix or plantings. Um, and I believe um, a seed mix is proposed. Okay. That's correct. Uh, so comments from members. Uh, Vinny? Uh, I'm all set. Okay. Ron? The, the seed mix is native grasses or i haven't specced it yet but i will be looking into that for um i'll get a specification on that for um prior to the next meeting great thank you yeah. laura um yeah everything you talked about sounds good i don't have any comments yeah okay uh tom uh, will, will this complete the sidewalk or is there another phase later on? <clears throat> yeah, good question. This will be, um, this is phase two of three. The, the last leg will be from Whitfield Terrace to um, Middlesex Ave, and that'll complete the stretch from Middlesex to Glen Road. Do you know if that'll happen next year or that could be uh, multiple I, years from now or you don't know? I know. I hope um, our plan is to do one one section, one phase a year. Um, so I, I'm hopeful that by fall 2021, it will all be complete. Um, okay. I have no questions. Uh, are there any questions from the audience on the the sidewalk? <laughs> Uh, let me or check on the, let me check anyway. on that. Um, and I do think that Alex joined us. So let me just try to um, unmute him. There he Hi, is. Alex. How are you? Hey, good. How are you? No questions for me. Good. Okay. And Valerie, uh, you're going to check to see if there was anyone in the audience. There is no one in the audience. Um, so no hands raised. Okay. Um, do you have the date for the July meeting? I've forgotten. Is it the 10th? It is. I think it's July 1st, Kathy. First. Is that right? Okay. Yes. Yep. All right. Um, so I'd entertain a motion to continue the public hearing for Shady Lane Drive till the 1st of July Conservation Commission meeting at the applicant's request. So moved. Vinny? Moved uh, and a second, please. Second. Laura seconded it. Uh, the voting, Vinny. I'm all set. That's good. Ron. 
Yes. Laura? Yep. Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself, yes. Great. Thank you very much. Thank and you, Paul. We'll see you in a month. <laughs> Good. The uh, next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing notice of intent for 687 Main Street. Mr. Chairman, the um, the applicant requested to continue to the July 1st meeting. Okay, so I'll, I'll entertain a motion to continue the public hearing, continue the public hearing for 687 Main Street to July 1st. So moved. Uh, was that Laura? Yep, second. Yes, a second from Vinny. Uh, the voting, yep. Vinny? Yes. Ron? Yes. Laura? Yep. Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself, yes. Okay. The next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing on a notice of intent for 100 Eames Street. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you can you hear me, Don? Yes, I can. Uh, the attorney Robert Peterson for the applicant Garrity Stone. Uh, since we were at the last meeting, Mr. Chairman, uh, we had addressed uh, all of the concerns raised by Mr. Looney relative to our stormwater management. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get them into the planning board in time to get a reply for last night's meeting. So we are on the planning board agenda for July. Uh, hopefully we can, we have addressed all of Paul's concerns uh, and we're awaiting his comments. Uh, with me this evening is Pat McCarty from the McCarty Companies, our engineer, uh, and also Jamie Garrity from Garrity Stone. Uh, Pat did meet with the town's wetlands consultant since the uh, May meeting and Pat is with us this evening, Mr. Chairman. And if you don't mind, I'd like to hand him the mic. So, certainly. Pat. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. As Bob said, I'm Patrick McCarty, McCarty Engineering. And uh, if I can, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Everybody see the uh, plan set? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So, um, we originally submitted the site plans um, to both Planning Board and Conservation back in March. As Attorney Peterson just said, we did receive some comments um, from planning and engineering, site plan related, traffic related, and, and wetland related. So we've uh, issued an updated set of plans dated May 18th that we submitted uh, a week and a half, about a week ago to both Planning Board and Conservation. And so I'd like to quickly run through those. And as Attorney Peter said, they're still being reviewed by Mr. Aluni. Um, so this is just an updated cover sheet. This is the updated existing conditions plan. For myself and Scott Morrison from Echotech, our wetland consultant, and Tom Paragallo, who's with us this evening from LEC, met on site and we walked all of the wetlands and we did make a couple uh, changes to the delineation, particularly right here where my cursor is. We added two flags, uh, B30A and B30B, which are right there. We added a connection from here behind this earth and berm from the B series over to the D series. So there's um, six flags added there. And then we added one flag over here, after, actually off property so we, we added those nine flags during our site walk. Uh, we had Dana Perkins go out and locate them. And we've updated the site plan to show those new flags and also to make the corresponding edits to the 15, 50, and 100 foot buffer zones. This is an updated demolition plan. We've clarified the proposed erosion control barrier, which is here along the back of the site and then uh, the limit of work. It was a little bit unclear, I'll admit, on the first set of plans. So we revised that 
just to refresh everybody's memory, building 11 at the front is proposed to be demolished and building 17 at the rear is proposed to be demolished as well as all the associated parking, um, most of the utilities within that limit of work. Building um, 12 does stay as it houses um, two steam boilers, uh, gas fired boilers that provide heat for the remaining structures on the site. We revised the layout, this parking area, got a little bit smaller. There used to be a second row of parking here closer to the street. Uh, again, that, that's outside the buffer zone. Nothing in the back here in terms of layout changed. We still have the, the van height loading bays to load the finished stone products on them, uh, compactor and then open top dumpsters for disposal of the stone scraps uh, from the cutting process. So not much changed in terms of layout within the jurisdictional area. We did, however, make some um, stormwater design changes based on the comments received from Mr. Looney. So starting at the street, this parking lot used to sheet flow down all the way to the back of the site. We've added a hooded deep sump catch basin and a storm tech infiltration system for that. At the loading dock, we had originally proposed a leaching catch basin. Now that's again a deep sump hooded catch basin that goes to a second small infiltration system. Along the back of the building, we had a vegetated swale that conveyed the roof runoff down to the back of the site. We've changed that to a, a piped design. So there'll be downspouts to a 12 inch ADS header pipe that comes down to a flared end and we have a at grade infiltration basin to take all of the rooftop runoff because the roof slopes from this side to the back side. It's a single slope roof. So we're able to capture all that roof runoff, bring it down here to the infiltration basin. The parking lot runoff currently comes down and there's essentially a notch, looks historically like a front end loader had gone in there years ago to make a way for the water to be conveyed from the pavement to the wetlands. So based on our conversations and comments from Mr. Aluni, we're now proposing a uh, pocket wetland. So there's a keystone diaphragm right at the proposed edge of pavement. We're, we're saw cutting and pulling the edge of pavement back. We have a small pool here that spills over and into a meandering channel that comes this way and around uh, and around again before it um, ultimately discharges to the wetland. So that was a suggestion of Mr. Aloni to incorporate that pocket wetland design. And while I'm zoomed in, I'll point out to the commission, these are the two locations that we're proposing work within the 15 foot no touch. Um, the first is this previously disturbed area where I mentioned that channel was carved in historically we're proposing to come uh, in this area here to regrade. It's all just scrub brush uh, now, nothing mature. So we're proposing to regrade that as part of outletting this um, pocket wetland because the, the bottom elevation needs to be at or below seasonal high groundwater for this to function properly. So the only way to get it to outlet is to, to work right up to the edge of the BBW with this one stretch. And then you can see there's a shape here that's a, an earthen berm that was constructed years ago when there was tanks stored here. And so we're proposing this little bit of work right here in the 15 foot no touch to be able to remove that earthen berm and let that revegetate naturally. Uh, I'm going to go back one page. We're proposing um, to, to delineate this 15 foot no touch in the future. It's hard to see, but there's a square there, 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 there. Every 50 feet, we're proposing a, a pressure treated post with a, a small sign on it that indicates that that is the limit of the 15 foot no touch so that anybody in the future is aware of that requirement so that there's no future encroachment into that area. So, then I, so that's the... Um, Grading uh, utilities, nothing changed, just a minor revision to the waterline uh, way outside of the jurisdictional area. 
The landscaping plan has been enhanced to propose appropriate plantings in that pocket wetland and uh, detention basin and seed mix for the infiltration basin. And then the rest of the plantings are up at the entrance to the building in the street. Lighting plan and some de uh, detail changes. So that is the, um, the changes relative to the site plans. And then I just took the liberty of quickly coloring one so that the commission could see that the medium green area here is the delineated wetlands that were based on the revised flagging from our site walk with LEC. The dark green is existing trees to remain. I just colored the infiltration base in blue so it would stand out aim for the pocket wetland. And then the rest of the areas that are this uh, medium green are to be revegetated. And then obviously the building and landscape areas. And then we issued on May 28th a um, comment, just basically a supplemental information letter that addressed the comments received um, from oh, Valerie. Sorry. Oh, I'm hearing things. Um, the first comment is uh, to have a peer review of the wetlands, which I just mentioned we did. The second is work within the uh, buildings within the 50 foot. And we did talk about this last meeting. And maybe if I pull up the this plan set, it would be a little more clear. the existing building number 17 so this is the 50 foot you can see that this area of the building here is all within the 50 foot and this is the building that's being demolished and so we're proposing the new building is is two feet closer but it's only closer from c35 to the corner of the building it immediately gets, by the time you're five feet away, you're at the same distance as the existing building and seven feet in this direction, you're the same as the ex existing building. But the footprint of the area, the footprint area of the building within the 50 foot is reduced. Um, where's my response? Apologize. So it's a, we're reducing it by about 60%, 57% of the building area within the 50 foot, 57% less in uh, proposed conditions and existing conditions. Uh, next was some notes. We added some notes about snow storage uh, and disposal, adhering to DEP snow disposal guidance, notes about um, not using pesticides and herbicides within the stormwater BMPs, uh, landscaping within the buffer zone should only contain native species, which we've revised to do that. A note um, prohibiting the use of rock salt within the 100 feet has been added to the plan. And then the seventh comment was the um, demarcation post that I showed you where the location of those are. And then they could show you the detail that I drafted. At the bottom center, which is just a four by four by eight foot long pressure treated post with a sign, a six by eight placard that says limit of 15 foot no disturb zone. And we have those proposed, uh, proposed at 50 foot intervals along that 15 foot no disturb limit. And then lastly, DEP did issue a file number and they did not offer any comments. So that would be my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. And we understand, obviously, that we still have to um, wrap things up with planning board and any comments that Mr. Aluni has on these revised plans. So we would be actually requesting a continuance this evening. I think Don stepped away from the computer for a second, possibly. Um, so maybe I could um, 
take the liberty of introducing Tom from LEC who conducted the peer review of the, the wetland boundaries. Um, Tom, if you'd like to, um, to give your presentation, that would be great. Okay, I have something uh, I wanna share if I can get the screen up. Um, gonna wait till the other one come down, I guess. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Can't seem to find it here. Uh, Valerie, do you have that one I sent you? Yeah, let me just pull that up. I have to just search my email real quick. I can't find the... Uh, file I wanted to share here. This is, um, yep. I can, um, I can pull that up. Hold on one second. <clears throat> Does it look like this? Yep. Uh, that's it. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Um, can we scroll at that? I guess you have control of it, so. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll try to follow your lead. <laughs> Just to make it easy um, for you to see. Um, anyway, I have no um, nothing significant to add to Pat McCarty's um, uh, explanation. Uh, we went out after our review, um, and I focused on the areas where uh, there was some disagreement. Uh, the, the bulk of the delineation, there was no disagreement. So we went back to those sites and um, with Scott Morrison agreed to make these, these changes are in green here. Um, this is where they're, um, uh, he was just explaining was gonna be uh, receiving some of this runoff water, treated runoff water. This is um, a swale, a wet swale that's uh, wetland that connected what was pre what was a um, uh, called an isolated wetland is now part of the BBW here, um, and then there's another area out and back that was expanded, and then way down here, a little spot in the corner, um, those those four areas were um, added to the plan um, in this revised plan. Um, you also asked in the um, proposal request for us to look off-site. Uh, of course, we don't literally go off-site and make concrete <laughs> assessments, but uh, there is this wetland here does swing back around and come pretty close to the property line here, which would... Um, we can't see where you're pointing. Oh, that's right. Um, on the north, the northern property line that's pretty straight across, it's on a diagonal. Right here. Yeah, right there. Just above where it says chain link fence. Yeah, the wetland uh, is on the other side of the fence, uh, roughly 20 feet away. So it doesn't impact this project, obviously, because it's probably 300 feet away. Um, but if there was any future work, we just made note that there was a, uh, another BB or the other part of the BBW extends there and would impact uh, the buffer zones. Um, that would be our only additional comment. That's on the Harrington parcel. Um, Harrington parcel. The, uh, yes, Deborah L. Harrington. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so I think we um, we actually lost Don, um, at least for a moment. Um, Ron, do you want to? Take the reins for us, if you don't mind. Sure, I'd be glad to. Thank uh, you. I, we, we continue to be on track for a continuance this evening, I believe. And uh, yeah. Valerie, do you have anything to, to add to the or questions? 
Um, no, um, just that we, um, as Patrick stated, we um, we received the plans last week, so we didn't we didn't have time to review the plans in time for this meeting. Um, so we'll be we'll be sure to do that um, for the next meeting and get comments out to them um, prior to. Okay. Questions from the uh, commissioners, Vinny? Yeah, I have. Uh, instead of using uh, pressure treated uh, uh, material at the uh, no disturb zone areas, is it possible to put some large boulders in those areas? Because the area has a lot of lead jam boulders. Could that be possible? Yeah, my. Uh, I don't really have a preference either way. My only thought was that, you know, boulders would be something that could be moved or somebody might not understand the reason for the boulders being lined up. So that's why I was just trying to propose a sign. That's what other other commissions have requested, but really don't have a preference. So if, if you'd prefer boulders over the signs, then that's fine by us. Well, I don't know how other commissioners feel, but I feel the boulders would be my preference. But as you said, I don't think I'm going to have a shortage of boulders when it's time to dig. <laughs> I'll be okay with that. Great. Uh, Tom, any questions? Uh, none for me. Thanks. Okay. Lori? No, nope. I like the idea of using rocks instead of pressure treated, but you know it's at their discretion but yeah if you have a ton of rocks on site anyway why not use a couple okay great uh question from me and that you were talking about uh pat was talking about uh work on a berm within the 15 foot no disturb zone yes. and uh suggesting when you were done you just uh let nature take its course is there uh an argument to be made against uh, landscaping, perhaps some uh, native grasses, shrubs. So um, if I could share my screen again, that might help. Uh, what happened to my site plans? Huh. That's weird. They're no longer in the list of plants because I can <clears throat> Okay, I take that back. Valerie, do you know how to expand the selections of what you can share? Um, I, I get a little... How about now? Can you see the detail sheet right now? Yeah, yes. we can. Yeah. So we have, um, you can see where the silt fence comes out here. Yeah. So this, that's, the, that's the erosion control line. And then the bold dash line is the uh, 15 foot. So yes. see, we do have all these plantings here as part of the pocket wetland. Okay. So that when we dig this out, you'd be left with a, you know, a triangle of dirt sticking up out of the ground. It'd be zero feet high here, probably four feet high, and then back to zero. Uh, the rem, you know, where that berm is. So we're just proposing to pull that back and then put all these plantings in. So, so we're, okay. we're more than reestablishing that 15 foot. Okay, great. Um, anyone in the audience have questions? I think it's uh, pound nine. Is that correct, Valerie? That's correct. Um, I don't know that we have anyone on the line um, from the public. Let me just make sure that's true. Yeah, we don't have anyone on the line, so no, no questions and comments, no raised hands. Okay, great. Then, uh, uh, Jamie Garrity, the applicant's here. I should, we should have probably offered him the chance to chime in. So before we uh, wrap things up, Jamie, did you want to add anything? I don't think there's anything I could add that would be uh, helpful or detrimental. Thank you very okay. much. <laughs> Just wanted to offer. <laughs> great. Okay, then I will entertain a motion to continue this till our July meeting. Is that what we're looking for? Will there be room between the planning board and our scheduled July meeting? 
So we had planning board um, July 7th evening and we go back to them on the 7th. So our plan would be to get uh, revised plans to them by the 23rd, which would be two weeks in advance, which is also uh, about two weeks from tonight. So depending on when we get comments back on these revised plans, that would be our goal. We're hoping that whatever changes have to be made are pretty minor at this point, since we feel we've addressed the comments received. So let's shoot for July and um, hopefully we'll be ready. Okay. Do I hear a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Hey, thank you. Second. Okay. All in favor, we'll do a roll. Uh, Valerie? Are you uh, Vinny? I'm okay. Okay. Tom? Yes. Lori? Laura, and yes. Laura, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lori just had a baby. <laughs> And we've got Alex here and Don reappeared. Okay. Okay. Hopefully Don's better with names than I am. But <laughs> Alex, you're okay. And, yeah. and as am I. Okay, that, that that's a quorum without Don. So Don, <laughs> would you like to weigh in on continuing this? I'll say yes. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very much. Evening. See you next month. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. Are you um, am I still on the voice here? Yes. Do you want uh, me to attend the next hearing or is that? The, the yeah. um, that's up to the commission, I guess. I think it sounds like um, all the issues were ironed out in the field and reflected on the plan. So I don't, I don't know that um, you would have to attend, um, but I'll defer to the commission. Does anyone feel that the peer reviewer should um, should attend the next uh, next month's meeting for this project, or are we we good? I'm okay. I'm okay. Good. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Is Don? Are you going to take over again for as the chair, or? Okay. Keep your fingers crossed. Okay. <laughs> Ron was doing a fabulous job, though. Yes. Thank you, Ron. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Next, we have a continued public hearing on a notice of intent for 67 Wildwood Street. Yes. Uh, thank you. It's uh, Luke Roy, LJR Engineering, um, here with the applicant, Angela Broussard. Um, we presented this project to the commission uh, last month, um, discussed a few things and answered a few questions from the commission. Um, at that time, uh, we didn't have a draft order of conditions to uh, discuss. And uh, so I'd be happy to answer if there's any uh, additional questions at this point or to discuss the uh, draft order conditions that was provided to us. Okay, thanks. Valerie? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Luke, if you could just um, go over um, a couple things for us. Um, um, one of the things was um, reducing the amount of disturbance to less than 20,000 square feet um, to, um, to stay within that simple stormwater category. Um, where, so how do you propose doing that? What areas will be pulled back? Um, as far as disturbance. And then uh, one of the comments from engineering from the past um, past plan was to um, remove some of the debris um, that you can see uh, along the wetland line. Um, you know, I think by hand, um, what can be removed by hand should be, the comment was should be removed um, as construction's happening. Um, those are the two things that I think are still, um, in my mind, um, need a little bit of of explanation and discussion. Okay, certainly. Um, I could share my screen and point to those areas. Um, uh, 
everyone see that? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we, in the plan that the commission currently has, uh, we've tabulated the total area of disturbance at 22,800 square feet. It's, it's noted right there. Um, and we were made aware as far as this, even though this is a single residential lot, be, because it's over 20,000 square feet, that would trigger the need for a uh, stormwater management permit, like a full permit, um, which would require a hearing. Uh, so rather than getting into that, uh, we would certainly opt to reduce the um, area of disturbance. So I basically shown in red essentially where we would intend to pull back the limit of work um, in this area here. And then also there's some area at the front of the house that really does not have to be disturbed. Um, when we originally drew this limit of disturbance for erosion control line, we just kind of encompassed this whole area, but um, we could certainly um, pull that back to eliminate the, uh, I think it's 2,800 square feet that we'd have to reduce it by. Um, so we would um, provide a revised plan to the commission for that um, as a condition. Um, the other question was as far as debris, uh, the applicant is going to be removing this existing garage in this, this large area of concrete slabs be in the back here. Um, in addition to that, the applicant's open to uh, removing any obvious visible debris in this immediate wetland area um, to the rear of, of this um, proposed project. The one thing I, I my comment on that, just to be clear, with this being a four and a half acre site, um, with the history of farming and, and there's additional abandoned like out structures that are out at the back part of this property that we just wanted to make sure that it was clear as far as how far uh, back it would be expected that 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 debris and material would have to be uh, removed. Because uh, at a certain point, it would be unreasonable to, to do that by hand. But I think, you know, into the wetland area, maybe 20 to 30 feet back in, in, in this general area, I think would be reasonable with the scope of this uh, particular project. Um, but I'm certainly open to uh, discussing that with the commission. Okay, just a clarification, Luke, where yeah. you draw the red lines. Uh, yeah. Does that in fact get you the um, reduction to 20,000 square feet? Um, it, it does more than that. Yeah, I don't I have that exact number, but um, I just wanted to give, I quickly kind of drew this on the PDF scan of the plan that we had that uh, to show kind of how we would achieve that. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions, Vinny? No, no, I don't. Um, let's see, Ron? No questions. Laura? Nope. Alex? No. Uh, Tom? No. Okay. Um, to the question about how far back to retrieve things from the wetland. Um, are most of the things that you've seen pretty easily visible? In other words, uh, are you looking at a tire or, you know, a bunch of, a bunch of lumber or, you know, what sort of things are prospects for removal? Um, I think it's, yeah, it's that kind of thing. Uh, it really depends on the time of year, too, as far as visibility of, of the material. 
as some of it being there for so long, but um, yeah, it's uh, I, I haven't really looked too closely at it, but I know there is material out there and there's certainly some that could be removed by hand. Valerie, do you, um, do you feel that you or someone else could be a referee for, for things that might um, sort of s stretch the, the limits of what to re what to remove? Um, sure. I, I think, um, I think, you know, we don't want any equipment out there. So I think it's definitely removal, you know, by hand. Yeah. Um, and, um, I think Luke's suggestion of, of 20 to 30 feet, I think that, you know, sounds reasonable and, um, happy to, um, to be out there, um, if necessary when that's happening. Um, but that sounds like a reasonable scope for the project. Okay. Um, so, and Luke, you mentioned that you, that you had the order of conditions and you've looked it over and all, you're, you're in agreement. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it was really just that, um, condition number 42, which we just discussed through regarding the, uh, uh, that can end this share. Yeah. Just regarding the uh, debris removal, so I think uh, that was really my only okay. uh, question. So, if we uh, choose to, we could qualify it by saying um, no, no further than twenty feet into the wetlands. Is that is that? that that would be acceptable. I'm sorry, I don't know why that came down. Let me get that back up. And we can um, edit it together. So we could say that visible debris um, located um, within, do we want to say 20 or 30? 20 to 30? Say tw 20, 20, 25. Split 25. Feet. Yeah. Within 25 feet of the wetland boundary shall be removed by hand in the rear of the property. Yep. Feet. Within 25 feet. Um, we want to clarify that it's within the BVW, though. So let's see. Visible to be located in the BVW within 25 feet of the wetland boundary shall be removed by hand in the rear of the property. Good. Is everybody else okay with that? Yes. Yes. It's a good compromise. Uh, Okay, yeah. let's let's see if there's any uh, questions or comments from the audience. Uh, we do have a caller, but um, there's no raised hand. If you do have a, a comment or a question to um, to comment, um, press pound nine. So no no comments, um, no raised hands. Okay, so let's. Uh, Let's move to the votes then. Um, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing for the notice of intent for 67 Wildwood Street. So moved. Ron made the motion. Vinny, second. Um, so on the voting, Vinny? I'm okay with it. Ron? Good. Laura? Yes. Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself, yes. Um, and now I'll entertain a motion to issue the order, order of conditions for 67 Wildwood Street as amended. So moved. Ronald, okay. Vinny seconded. Uh, for the votes, Vin? 
I'm okay with it. Ron? Yes. Laura? Yes. Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself, <laughs> myself, yes. And we had another vote there, too. Better <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you. Sure. The wonders of Zoom meetings. All right. Maybe it should be Zoo as opposed to Zoom. <laughs> so the, the next item on the agenda is a uh, continued public hearing on a notice of intent for 5 West Gale Avenue. Greg, is that you? You're muted? Should should we unmute Greg? Yeah, me. <laughs> I don't get it. Yes. All right. Okay. So you were before you last month. Um with made a few changes to the plan. We've added on the plan view the construction entrance detail. And we've also added the inverse. To, to show that it heads out the rear yard and that will reduce any runoff to the front yard. And we have also added the uh, stumps where the trees were. And we reviewed the uh, draft order and I uh, just had one comment which uh, we address with Valerie. Sorry, you're, you're muted. Um, I'm trying to share my screen so we can pull the plan up. There we go. Let's see. Um, okay, so um, I think the um, all of the comments that we had were addressed um, um, by the revised plans. Um, engineering's comments were addressed. The only thing. Um, you know, I think we did talk about the um, the trees that were taken down at the last meeting prior to approval. Um, and those, um, I think, Greg, did you say that they're shown on here the as as those kind of star? Yes. Trees? OK, OK. Um, so I didn't have any outstanding um, questions or comments. Um, there was a, a error in the draft order. I had a I used the template from a Shashin project, and um, so there was a condition in there that didn't apply to this one for a plan change. So there was a there's a draft order that I prepared um, for the board's consideration. That uh, has Greg seen the corrected one? Yes. Well? Yes. Okay. Yep, we've read it, and we're fine with it. Okay. Great. Um, all right, for for the commission, then Vinny, any comments or questions? I'm all set. Ron, just could you refresh my memory? The engineering report mentions the extensive tree uh, removal, and uh, you say that it was indicated on the map. Or was that necessary for building, or are those being replaced? So yes, we located the trees that were cut. And the trees were cut by the uh, builder due to that April windstorm. Some of the trees were damaged. So he had a tree cutter come in because one of the neighbors was very concerned about the tree falling on his house. So he just had the, the lot cut. So they did stay outside the um, 25 foot zone and they stayed within the erosion control area. But the trees were cut prior to. So the builder generally always does some landscaping on the yard, but these are, you know, typical trees that would have been cut anyways. It's just as one big one 
that was actually outside the buffer zone was, you know, scaring the uh, neighbor. Is a 80 year old man that said he couldn't sleep at night. So the builder had a tree company come in and cut him. There are, there are, there are, there are, a little horse tonight. There are some trees uh, at the back of the lot remaining that'll uh, provide some shade. Yes, absolutely. So outside of the um, erosion control, all those trees are remaining. Okay. So that that's all. There's large trees in there. Yes. Okay. Laura? I don't have any comments. Alex? Um, no, I'm good. Uh, Tom? No. Okay. Uh, I don't have any myself. Are there any um, people in the audience who are interested in commenting or have questions on Five Westdale? We do not have any raised hands. Okay. With the exception of yours. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's move to the to the uh, votes then. The first would be uh, a motion to close the hearing for five Westdale Avenue. So moved. Second. Okay. And second from Laura, was it? Yeah. Okay, and the voting, Vinny? I'm okay with it. Ron? Yes. Laura? Yes. Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Thank you. So the next motion <laughs> would, would be to um, issue the order of conditions for five Westdale Avenue. <laughs> We'd like to make that motion sure. run. Okay, a second. Second. Second from Vinny. And the voting, Vinny? I'm okay. Ron? Okay. Laura? Yes. Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So we've issued the order of conditions as well. Okay, the uh, next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing for an ad rent for 26 Douglas Ave. Uh, Mr. Chairman um, and Kathy, help me out with um, the date that they proposed, but um, this, the applicant has um, requested to continue to um, a future meeting. Um, Kathy, September. was it September 2nd? I think is the... So yeah, can... the September 2nd meeting. Okay. Could I have a motion then to continue the public hearing on the NRAD for 26 Douglas Avenue till the September 2nd meeting. So moved. So moved. Um, I'm going to give that one to Vinny. A second from? Second. second from Laura? Yep. All in favor, Vinny? Okay. Ron? Yes. Laura? Yes. Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. And I'm a yes and no none are opposed. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing on an ad rad for um, 378 to 384 Middlesex Ave and 200 Jefferson Road. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, the applicant has proposed to continue to the June 17th um, meeting that we've agreed to have with them for their project. 
um, the peer reviewer needs additional time to um, report back to you. Okay. Um, are there any, is there anyone in the audience that wants to, to uh, comment on, on anything? We got a letter, from the stream team, right? I don't know. If we did get a letter, but um, since the, we won't have an open hearing, I apologize um, for the dog. Um, we won't have an open hearing tonight to discuss it if we, um, if we continue it to June 17th. Um, so I, I let those folks know that it would be continued to June 17th um, okay. and there wouldn't be a discussion tonight. All right. Yeah. I just wanted to loop that caller in. All right. So then uh, I'm looking for a motion to continue the public hearing on the ANRAD for 378 to 384 Middlesex Ave and 200 Jefferson Ave till June 17th. Move. All right, I'm going to give that one to Alex, was it? And a second? Second. From Vinny. Thank you. Um, the voting, Vinny? Yes. Juan? Yes. Laura? Yes. Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself, yes. So, Moving on to a request for a certificate of compliance for 7 Edwards Road and Sherwood Road. Mr. Chairman, the um, there I did a site visit. Um, engineering did a site visit to the um, to the parcel. Um, everything looked pretty good. There was though a little bit of erosion along the the expanded roadway um, that the applicant has agreed to fix and stabilize. Um, so he actually requested that he be put on next month's agenda so that that could be um, fixed prior to um, issuing that certificate. So we'll table it tonight then? Yes, please. Okay. So could I have a vote to table the request for a certificate, certificate of compliance for 7 Edwards Road and Sherwood Road, please? So moved. Vinny, made the motion. Second. Second, was that Ron or was it? No. It was not hey. Ron. That was Alex. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Uh, Vinny? Yes. Ron? Yes. Laura? Yes. Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself, yes. Uh, the next is the request for a certificate of compliance for 25 Adams Street. Mr. Chairman, I did a site visit to the parcel. Um, engineering did a site visit as well. Um, this was for a pool. Um, everything looks great and uh, it's ready to issue. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 25 Adam Street. So moved. Vinny made the motion. Second. Ron made the second. Uh, for the voting, Vinny? Yes. Ron? Yes. Laura? Yes. Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. Myself, yes. Um, the next is a request for a certificate of compliance for 5 Mary Street. Mr. Chairman, this was a construction of a new single family home um, um, quite some time ago. Um, before my time. I did a site visit. Everything looked good. Um, engineering did a site visit. Um, if you'll recall, this was on a previous agenda um, some months ago. Um, we caught that they didn't um, have the paver patio shown on the as-built, so they went back, redid the as-built, and now it matches um, what they have out there. Um, so it's ready to issue. Okay, good. Uh, so I'll accept a motion to issue a request a uh, certificate of compliance for 5 Mary Street. So moved. Vinny made the motion and Alex Second. seconding. Okay. Um, the voting, Vinny? Yes. Ron? Yes. Laura? Yes. Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself, yes. 
Okay. Um, the last uh, bit of discussion is a administrative tree re removal uh, at 333 Salem Street. Yes, we put this on the agenda to um, to just give you an update that I did approve um, the removal of I think it was four trees um, at 333 Salem Street. Originally, they had proposed um, you know almost a, a dozen trees that they were looking to take down. Um, we kind of narrowed it down to the trees that were not in good shape. There was one that actually fell and a portion of it fell and it was in pretty rough shape. Um, and then three others that were also in pretty rough shape and, and imposing on their house kind of almost on the house. So um, we whittled it down to the ones that actually fit the criteria for administrative tree re removal. And I approved those. Um, he's going to be replanting trees in their place. And um, I explained that if he wants to come back to the commission to um, request removal of any of the others, he's welcome to do so with a, a filing. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. um, Kathy, do we have minutes for the two meetings you mentioned? No, we don't. Okay. So unless there's thinking on my part. Uh, so unless there's uh, anything else, are, are we done then for the night, Valerie? Yes. Thank you all very much. And welcome, Tom, to the commission. And yep. um, maybe we'll see your face at the next meeting. We'll um, we can work out any bugs. And um, that's Valerie, all we have. Yeah. Valerie, could we could we stay on for a few minutes, see if, see if we can get this working? Because, I mean, sure. I'm on conferences all day. I don't know. I don't understand what happened here. But maybe I need to sign off and sign on again. But. I don't want to hold everyone up. Maybe we could um, maybe we could just schedule something um, um, separately so that okay. because this is this is recorded and that might be odd. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we'll we'll schedule right. something um, to get. Yeah. Send to me an have email a, and we'll we'll do a separate session. That you'll, sounds great. You'll have me all to yourself. That and sounds I can, great. I can hear your dog barking <laughs> in the background. We'll be fine. Yeah. She settled down. Okay. Good. <laughs> There's probably a deer out back. So. <laughs> We've okay. actually had some thunderstorms here. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Send yeah. them my way. I need some rain. <laughs> no, right. I don't have to go. I don't have to go water my plants. No, that's all we have tonight. So thank you very much. Okay. Uh, right. So I'll make the motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, okay. 28 by my clock. Could I have a second? Second. Second from Laura. The voting, Vinny? Yeah. Ron? Yes. Laura? Yes. Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself, yes. Okay. Stay Thank well, you. everyone. See you next month. Or see okay. you next two weeks. Bye -bye. Bye. Have a good night.